Hello everyone! Yes, it's this time of the year again. I kind of started this habit of doing a tier list right before the next big expansion release. And of course, I know everybody just likes to skip ahead to let me instantly know how wrong I am in the comment section. So let me make it a little bit more convenient and just show the entire thing right away. But this was only semi-sarcastic because I like to see different perspectives and spark discussions as long as people don't feel too angry and offended on behalf of their little in-game waifus or whatever. As for the usual disclaimers, to establish some common ground, I treat every 5 star as a baseline without constellations and every 4 star at C6. To me, this just seems like the most straightforward approach. As for the ranking, performance is still the main criteria, but I value things like playstyle, accessibility, versatility too. Damage isn't everything, at least people always say that it's a casual game, so I guess let's put it to the test. And finally, I wouldn't say I have a good grasp on the meta or the Genshin community in general, so if you're looking for a list that super accurately reflects the current meta state of this game, then you probably should look somewhere else for that, I'm just being completely honest about that. I'm not completely out of the loop though, I do browse some Genshin related reddits here and there still, and I do think I have a good understanding of the game's mechanics, so I think there is some value in me giving my opinion, and if nothing adds, I'd, it just might be entertainment. To just say it clearly though, this is just my personal opinion, nothing more and nothing less. Actually, while we're at it, let me just tell a quick anecdote on that, the intro is already way too long anyway, so who cares at this point. The thing that inspired me to start this YouTube channel was a lot of people calling Raiden bad when she released, so my first videos were me claiming the exact opposite. I'm not saying I fixed her rap or I'm always correct, but I might provide a perspective that doesn't always have to align with the majority opinion, and sometimes I might even get things right that others didn't really get at the time. Anyway, with all that out of the way, there are a lot of characters to talk about, so let's finally get into it. I try to be brief going over each one of them, so this won't turn out to be a feature-length movie. S tier, characters that are almost certainly good assets for any account and hopefully future-proof for quite some time. Must pose if you want to use the meme word. Raiden, nice damage and utility with team-wide burst damage bonus and energy generation, which makes playing her teams feel very smooth and easy. On top of that, she is also quite versatile with different sub-DPS builds. After telling this little anecdote earlier, you can probably tell that there's a little bit of bias there, but still, realistically, I don't see her below S tier, but I can certainly see her not being the best character in the game. After all, there's pretty tough competition up here. Nahida, great consistent off-field damage, while also providing a huge elemental mastery buff, nothing really changed since last year. Purina, the first new character on my list, a huge team-wide damage bonus and really nice off-field damage, what else can you ask for? She kind of requires a healer to generate fanfare points and she damages your team, which can lead to a character being in one-shot range in Abyss, but the upsides just outweigh this by a lot. Still, it made the slightest difference, which is why I rated her below Nahida. In general though, EM and damage bonus have different use cases, so they don't actually compete that much. Cloron, she hits surprisingly hard and is very engaging and fun to play, one of the most active characters when it comes to her playstyle. I think she is not as universally useful as the top 3, but there is still some variety there, though I have to admit that a lot of her teams feel kind of similar, that's probably her main weak point. Maybe there's some recency bias here, so I can definitely see her dropping some spots on this list. Arlequino, another very hard hitting character, this one on the other hand is very easy to play though, but she is still engaging enough to be fun. She also doesn't lose her infusion when switching characters, which feels surprisingly nice. Excellent variety as well, with Vaporize, Overload, Melt, and with Emily coming up, Burn or Melt Burn. She can't be healed though, but it isn't as big of a deal as you might expect, even without a shield, her burst is usually enough to self-sustain her. To be fair though, in Abyss 12 she might feel a little squishier than others. To me, Alekino seems like the best character right now, definitely the best DPS, but in the near future, there's some uncertainty with the Pyro Archon around the corner, potential power creep, so I settled for top 5. Zhangling, speaking of which, in case the Pyro Archon isn't going to be a sub DPS, then I don't think Zhangling is going anywhere for the rest of Genshin's existence. 
Elementor skill and Bear skill providing Pyro application simultaneously, which logically results in the highest off-field Pyro application in the game, while also dealing more damage than most other characters in general. Of course, this has to be a character that was designed pre-release and fell through the cracks. Mihoyo also doesn't believe in nerfs, so it seems like all they are left with is a problem with no solution. Nobelette, he might not do as much damage as Alekino or Chloran for example, but with him it's just ease of play, like having a giant HP bar and crazy self healing while still doing more than respectable damage with the press of a single button. For newer players it's probably the number one recommendation to pull since he just works fine by himself. Though the line for simplicity and boredom is quite permeable to be a little philosophical here and personally I got bored of him quite fast. You literally don't press any buttons on this character. Sucrose, a big element of mastery buff, damage buff with constellation 6 and she can be used on field to swirl with normal attacks which means outside of her buffs she is basically the go-to character for a lot of the transformative reactions as an on field driver. To be fair Nahida took some of her market share though. Kazuha, big damage buff while also providing quite reasonable personal damage himself, keep in mind though this is without constellations, his first two basically make him a completely new character. He's still very good at C0, but a lot of damage bonus is additive, so in a sense Farina can be seen as competition as well. Fischl, best Electro sub DPS and kind of similar to Zhang Ling, she also has two sources of damage in her elemental skill and passive skill hitting simultaneously for very high off-field Electro application rate and damage. And even if you don't specifically need an Electro sub DPS, you really can't go too wrong with just throwing it into any team that doesn't aim for a too specific game plan. Zhongli, resistant threat to everything all at once, big shield, some crowd control and a geo construct which gets important later for a certain other character. Also geo resonance is really good, he might not always be the best option but his elemental skill alone pretty much guarantees that he will never be bad in pretty much any team composition. Bennett, huge attack buff, heals and the good old conundrum of his constellation 6. It has some anti-synergy with for example Ayaka, but also opens up some Bennett DPS builds or extra buffs for pyro carries. Jingzhou, again double hydro application from the rain source rotating around your active character and his bear skill hitting simultaneously, which makes him the premier character for a lot of bloom and vaporize teams. He is the last one of the trio of broken four stars this game launched with Zhang Ling, Fischl and Jingzhou. Venti, the first limited character that released, but as all of the Archons he is still very useful. Whenever you are in Abyss or an event stage with endless small monsters flooding in, this is the one character you want, he just sucks in a good way. <laughs> Yelan, still great synergy with the top characters like Raiden or Alekino for example, but Farina kind of does a similar thing and arguably in a lot of instances even better. If normal attacks aren't as prevalent in the future, she might even drop down a tier. Baiju, decent utility, decent dendro application and decent damage if you build for it, on top of a lot of healing which makes him great fuel for Farina. Without her he wouldn't be up here though to be quite honest. A tier, characters that currently are in a very good spot but I wouldn't exactly miss them on my account if I didn't have them, starting with Nilu. She's very unique, I think she's the only character in the game who modifies an elemental reaction but it comes with heavy restrictions on teams, unless you are willing to play her down both of her passive skills you are basically forced to restrict yourself to only hydro and dendro characters. Having this kiss curse mechanic is fine but this feels like an awful way to do it. The devs also seem to have changed their philosophy a little bit on this since the next character having restrictions like this was Chevreuse who obviously is a 4 star. I think that's way more reasonable and hopefully that's the trend we are going with from now on. Long story short, she is good and unique but from limited 5 stars I demand a certain range of variety. I'll hate them. This might be a controversial one because design wise he's probably one of the most interesting characters while also dealing really nice damage but his mirrors just extend his animation so much that he feels a little bit clunky to me. Also animation logs, hacking hits because of that is just frustrating. He might be the first character I knocked down at here for reasons completely unrelated to his actual performance. Wu Tao, again it's C0, so once you experience C1 you can never go back, jump cancels just feel awful compared to dash cancels, but it's still the same character dealing nice damage, Adekino is a thing now too though. 
Navia, the character that somehow managed to make crystallize fun. Her damage is quite nice, but there's only so much you can do as a Geo character. In other words, a character without elemental reactions for extra damage. I do think there's some value in her being a Geo character who actually synergizes with non-Geo characters, which is quite rare. I think she is pretty much the only one there if you um, single out um, just DPS characters. Of course, Zhongli is universally good. Ayaka. Yes, the pride and joy of my main account. When I play my fully buffed up Ayaka with Cryo Pyro Resonance in a my team with a Zhangling, Bennett and Shenny in Abyss 12, I expect bosses to die after full sending everything. So it's kind of weird to see that in these Fontaine patches, things sometimes just live. Now, this is with a Constellation 3 and Refinement 2 Miss Splitter, so when we talk about C0, I don't think there's any justification for her to be S tier anymore. She is also not quite like uniquely interesting in terms of playstyle, so nothing had changed. It's kind of a weird case of indirect power creep, because in my mind, she is still the best cryo main DPS. Kokomi and Shinobu, both of these characters got their big glow up in Sumeru with the introduction of Dendro and the whole bloom thing, that's basically it. Kokomi is a little bit more versatile though, so I rated her higher than Shinobu. Yai Miko, it's basically the same story. Of course, Electro characters love the Dendro release, and we started to see a lot of cross synergy for elemental mastery scaling with a Dendro Resonance or Nahida for example. Rosaria, basically cryo jungling, extremely hard hitting burst skill which also snapshots, a crit rate buff on top of that, but unfortunately no ice gobo or access to vaporize. But with the pyro archon coming up and the whole pyro nation alongside it, I have very high expectations for this character. Ganyu, she still hits very hard, especially when it comes to consistent damage, which makes her in situations where Ayaka can't kill straight out of the opener kind of pull ahead in damage. But she is a charged attack bow character, which means in terms of playstyle she can be a little bit hit or miss, no pun intended. But arguably she has one of the highest skill ceiling with the weird aim mode animation cancels, which can be fun in itself if you like, like FPS games for example. Child, it's kind of similar to Venti. If you get swarmed by small enemies, Child is kind of the next best character to play, and he is probably one of the most fun characters in those situations. Otherwise, though, he is kind of okay at best. Yoimiya, basically the exact opposite of Child. When you have a single target, she is right at home, an absolute boss killer who falls off really hard if you just have even a second target around. Wondra, Scaramouche, or however you want to call him, his damage is quite decent and his playstyle is very unique, but sometimes he feels a little bit clunky to me when it comes to tracking. Sometimes there are enemies right below him and it just doesn't register. It's a little frustrating and there is no easy way to lose height. Also, on a side note, he might just be the best character for general exploration, especially when you pair him up with the Sayu Animo Resonance combo. Speaking of frustrating, Zhao. I never made a secret of me disliking this character, granted Zhan Yun is some really good new synergy for him, so he definitely has the damage to be rated here, if not higher, but his weird anti-energy generation while his burst skill is active is still a thing. Why is his elemental skill a movement skill if you get punished for using it during his burst? It makes no sense to me. Settling on having to blow both charges before using the burst is the dumbest game design I've ever seen, and I just can't get over this, I'm sorry. He also has the novelette problem that you just don't really do anything on him. He is a little bit boring when it comes to playstyle. I know I said it's a personal tier list, but I don't want to be completely unreasonable here and put him at the very bottom, even though I refuse to play him at all, so here he goes. Lenny, I think he does good damage and he does something quite unique, but again, similar as Ganyu, he requires you to aim, which might or might not be a problem. Aside from that, there isn't a crazy amount of synergy there, but Emily is releasing soon and there is a Pyro Archon on the horizon. I feel like this guy has the potential to climb up some ranks really soon. To be fair though, he is a little bit one-dimensional in terms of playstyle and teams. I could see him being rated higher than Yoimiya though. Sichuin, she is new, but there really isn't much to say. She's very straightforward. If your team has a lot of elemental skill damage, pick Sichuin. Her Hydro application is also quite decent, and she does her job at sustaining your team while also doing okayish damage. And lumping in with her, I have kind of Diona and Layla here. They do kind of similar things as in sustaining your team while buffing, in Diona's case, elemental mastery, or in Layla's case, normal or charge attack damage with their constellations. It just makes sense to me to group them here together. 
Shiori, she actually grew on me. Her damage is surprisingly good and she works well with most other Geo characters and can even be randomly thrown in with a Zhongli or Ningguang in pretty much any random team composition for Geo Resonance and Akiak Petra utility. With Constellation 1, it would allow her to be better in Navia teams, but even without it, she is quite flexible in my opinion. The only downside is her puppets have very low range with like longish cooldowns, so it's kind of hard to reposition them. Ayato, his main DPS build feels like it also lost some oomph similar to his sister, but he has an interesting emblem set sub DPS use case, especially since his burst skill also snapshots to benefit from Bennett, for example. Of course, the main synergy in mind is Alekino, who will also benefit from the normal attack damage bonus while also getting his, um, oh sorry, her, or Wait, his might not even be that wrong? I, I don't even know. Um, getting the vaporize set up. This just hits another layer of flexibility, which makes this character still worth placing here in my opinion. Especially keeping in mind that his main DPS build also is still quite decent, but just not comparable to Nevelette. B tier, characters who are either very specific synergies, good characters that are power crept heavily, or maybe just have unfavorable elements assigned to them, like for example Eula. Overall she is a very good character, but physical is just not in the best place, a lot of mechanical enemies in Abyss which have high resistance and the lack of options to interact with most other elements in meaningful ways. Ito, same as Eula, the character itself is very good, but Geo reactions are even more so of a meme, and within Geo he only seems to look out for his fellow defense scalers, so he is quite the one-dimensional character in every way imaginable. Granted, he is very fun to play. Ningguang, she is one of my all-time favorites, but also a Geo character, sadly. Uh, like I said before, Akiak Petra Ningguang with Toshiori, for example, could be really nice to buff up official of Arena, but that's probably already the best case scenario. She does very good damage on her own, but without the elemental reactions helping her out, she can't really compete with the other better elements. The unfortunate reality is though that after Navia's release, a Geo reaction rework seems rather unlikely. Imagine if you could throw in Lacadia like to increase their damage by doing some sort of magma reaction. Something along those lines. Ningguang has such good base damage that anything functioning similar to Quicken, Melt or Vaporize would do a lot especially for her and obviously for Geo in general. Sino, a decent character, he kind of gets outclassed by Raiden and Chloran though, at least that's what I have been thinking, but his elemental mastery scaling is quite interesting. I just recently built Chevreus and I can see him doing some really good overload damage, he might even be the best for that. To be honest, this is definitely a character I have to revisit and he might get a higher spot in the future. Rassi, I was quite excited for him, but he disappointed me after actually playing him. His HP drain is a lot higher than expected and his burst is also not that impressive. He just seems like a Yoimiya with extra stabs. Cryo DPS are also in a weird spot that pretty much only Melt and Freeze are worth considering. Freeze also doesn't work against bosses, so there's less variety there. I would have liked if he had some elemental mastery bonus scaling even, since he synergizes well with Jingshou and I thought there might be some potential for a Bloom team with the whole fridging mechanic. And this way, he would get something out of the Nahida Burskill and Dendro Resonance or whatnot. This would also still be useful for Melt teams, but I'm aware that this sounds kind of weird. I'm not even convinced myself. Still, maybe it would have been more interesting than what he offers now. Albedo, a Geo sub DPS with an elemental mastery buff seems a little bit ironic, but his damage is quite decent. Not as good as Shiori's, but still good enough. You don't want to have a lot of random Geo application and a lot of teams making other reactions inconsistent just to force the elemental mastery buff in, so in my mind, he isn't quite as universally useful as you might think at first. Granted, he is very easy to play, so he is probably really good if you consider yourself a very casual player and you don't really care about this level of min-maxing. On the other hand, of course this can also seem as really boring gameplay, since uh, theoretically you only need to press one button every 30 seconds on him. To me, it would make more sense if he was buffing Geo damage, for example, especially since his best teams involve Ito Goro or Navia. Toma, he is kind of similar to Shinobu, as in he benefited a lot from Dendro, but Hyperbloom just seems better than Burgeon to me, and Shinobu is also easier to use since Toma requires normal attacks. And lumped in with him, I have all these hyper specific utility characters like Feruzen, Yunjin, Chevreuse, um, Goro, Sara, Shanhe, and uh, Jean Yun. All of these characters provide some fairly specific utility, so I group them all together here. They might be incredible in their niche, but these utility characters are dependent 
it on DPS characters and it's clearly a one-way road. For example, you can easily play Ganyu without Chen He, but the other way around it gets very nuanced really quickly. In a way, this dependency pushes the flexibility criteria to its extreme, so I rated all of them a little bit lower. Also, Chevreus is a new character, but I don't have a strong opinion on her just yet. Just like I said her earlier, I just recently built her, but again, she just feels like she can be lumped in with all these hyper niche utility characters. Gaming and talking about Jan Yun by extension, are new characters released to revive the plunging attack mechanic. An unfortunate byproduct is that Jan Yun seems to be mandatory for these characters. She is just that good. Right now, I don't think there is quite enough plunging attack synergy here. We have some Albedo of anti constellations, but for actual characters designed around it, just Zhao, Gaming, and Jan Yun feels kind of insufficient. Gaming is a lot of fun to play, as opposed to Zhao, in my personal opinion. And if you have the combo, He's also doing a lot of damage, so at least I'm interested to see if this mechanic gets pack picked up again in Nathlan. Klee, I think she is a decent pyro carry, but I don't like her being designed around charge attacks. Since her pyro application is very high, it makes it very hard to vaporize her attacks. In general, Yan Fei is just a better designed character around charge attacks, and Hu Tao is just better at using them. I would have liked Klee to just have faster normal attacks and change her passive skill, maybe involve elemental mastery buffs or scaling somehow. This would just carve out a very nice niche for Klee to be used as like a carry in like overload or burning or melt burn teams or something like that. Noelle, with her C6, she is a very real unit, but she still has the same old problem. I believe it's still the only elemental skill in the game that doesn't generate any energy for whatever reason, which is holding her back, especially against bosses. When fighting larger groups, she works just fine, potentially even without a battery, but her elemental skill is probably the biggest design flaw in the entire game, even more so than Zhao. And that's saying a lot, because I actually like Noelle. They did her absolutely dirty. Just give her 3 or 4 energy particles, geoparticles, it might even be enough to make her creep up all the way to A tier for me as a hard hitting healer with Akak Petra utility for maximum Farina synergy for example. Beidou, she's one of the most fun units, but unfortunately she is kind of hard to use. Most characters lose their infusion when switching, which means you can't really quickly justify to pop into Beidou for a counter and get back to your main DPS. A Sucrose Taser team or Alekino Overload is there, maybe even Navia teams, but it's tough to find comps who want Electra application and allow the frequent quick swaps for counters. Dari, Yao Yao and Barbara, they are all healers who offer extra elemental application, but aside from that there isn't much more utility to be expected. I think they are all decent replacements for better characters like Kokomi or Baiju in case you don't have them, but I would say they are actually never a first choice. Dari is a little bit more unique, but she just doesn't do quite enough to put her high on the list next to the better supports, but I do believe that energy generation is a little bit undervalued. It just allows you to build more damage on DPS characters instead of energy recharge while still maintaining a good rotation with the energy Dori provides. C tier, yes you can use anyone in combat and still do well, but I would say using these characters is pretty much a handicap. Starting with Lynette, it's hard for her to compete with Kazu Aventi, Sucrose or Jean for example, there are just so many good Anemo supports out there. Her burst skill does last quite long, can be infused and she gains an extra Anemo infusion for normal attacks with C6. So she has the ability to swell quite a lot, but her attack buff just doesn't cut it. To compete with a Sucrose utility for example, especially since uh, Lynette's attack buff is also conditional on the elements in your team, it needed to be way more valuable, more than like 6% attack per element or whatever it is. Charlotte, this is probably the character I know least about on this list, at least when it comes to the raided one, so I might be underestimating her. All she does is damage and healing with no extra utility as far as I can remember. To outweigh Diona or Layla's buffs, Charlotte would have to do S tier damage and her modifiers don't quite look like it. But again, I could be sleeping on this one. Sayu, she is an Animo healer and she can swirl with her burst and elemental skills simultaneously, which is kind of good. Unfortunately, she is just extremely energy hungry, so it's hard to fit a lot of extra elemental mastery on her builds. In general, Sucrose is just several classes above her when it comes to swirling, and it's a little bit hard to tell if Sayu's healing or the attack buff from Lynette is more valuable. I'll lean towards Lynette right now, since Sayu also demands a lot of field time. 
This is fine though, since uh, Sayu is a prime exploration character, so even without combat in mind, she is just nice to have, and she also has the uh, Lily Pichu voice actor bonus. <laughs> Sean Yun, he was good as part of the original national team, but since then he kind of fell off and when Chen Yu released it was kind of interesting for a while that synergy, so it's possible that he comes back with another new character in the future again. Yan Fei, I think she is very well designed but the damage is just not there and even though I quite like playing her, I just don't see any future prospects, even if we get big charge attack synergy, Puta would simply steal the show. Kirara, she is similar to Sayu but she didn't get the overlapping burst skill to really push her dendro application. It's still a decent option if you need a dendro on-field driver <laughs> who also sustains your team. Kave, I expect he was designed for a Nido synergy. He can be fine if you lack other dendro characters. Unfortunately, Nahida, Alhatham, Baiju can all be used as on-field dendro drivers. Even Kirara offers some sustain, which is kind of valuable. His biggest problem in my experience is energy. He is reliant on his expensive burst, which often means he will settle on a Favonius Greatsword or something like that, and miss out on a lot of extra elemental mastery for extra bloom damage. This is one of the big reasons Shinobu is so good. She doesn't care about energy or all she needs is elemental mastery and you can easily hit like a thousand elemental mastery on Shinobu to do the big numbers. There is some upside of having forced reaction order just for simplicity especially when it comes to bloom but I just wasn't impressed. Hazo, he's fun but he's also weird, he wants to be a DPS but he also wants to buff elemental mastery for your team. If you want to be a jack of all trades then you better be a master of all because certain characters at the very top are certainly just that. Unfortunately I don't think Hazo is one of them. Razor, part of the physical meme, way worse than Eula, nothing else to say. Kolei, she's fine but she doesn't do anything too special, also the Dendro main character can do pretty much her job so there isn't really a good reason to build her even if you're missing some of the really strong Dendro characters. Candice, another weird character, she is clearly meant to be played in a quick swap team with a similar counter mechanic to Beidou and a burst skill that triggers hydro damage when switching characters. On the other hand, she is also providing a hydro infusion and increases elemental normal attack damage which seems to go against quick swapping completely. So her skill kit is a little confused when it comes to her identity, I would say. When you ask me, they should have just scrapped the whole normal attack thing and completely owned in on the quick swap idea by increasing burst skill damage for your team with Candice Burst active and refreshing its wave instance whenever you counter an attack with her elemental skill. I think that would have been some really engaging and active gameplay in a quick swap team. Mika, physical is a little bit of a meme and this guy is even more so a joke since he has the thankless job of being a utility character that only works for supporting physical DPS. And I think if I remember correctly there were also some weird interactions with the skill kids but I'm not sure about that one but he is still bad enough without that. Shen Yen, same as Candace, her skill kit just goes into different directions, but I can't even begin to make sense of this one. Maybe the person who designed her was high or drunk, I don't even know. Ramine, the newest addition to the physical meme, it's a shame because his mechanic is kind of unique. Whoever designed this character definitely did the best they could with what they were given. I can only assume that there is a reason he is a 4 star though. I don't think we will ever see another 5 star DPS because we need a major rework for physical. Maybe that's just wishful thinking though. <laughs> Unrated, you are probably wondering why this is even here and rightfully so. In my opinion it's the fact that you can have any of these characters randomly at C6 or not even get them at all and there's nothing you can do about it. Characters that involve this level of randomness offer no value to this discussion. For example on my main account I played every day since release and I still don't have Mona without there being a reliable way to get her. So giving her any consideration for a tier list would absolutely be a waste of time in my opinion. Of course I'm operating within the confines of a gacha game because in the grand scheme of things you could make this argument for like every character in a gacha game going with this logic so it's actually pointless to make a tier list for these games in the first place. But anyway, 
Uh, for Sethoth, I just have no clue what he does. I didn't get around to trying him yet. As for the Traveler, it's obviously a free character and he's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none kind of deal with like unlocking every element. So it's kind of valuable enough in and itself to build him in the first place. And then Aloy, I don't even know if this character still exists, but anyway, she is terrible. And for the standards to name some standouts, I think Jean and Tenari are definitely the best ones for everyone else. I don't think they are of much interest. Dia is okay if you have some Ganyu teams going on. And if you like big damage screenshots, maybe build Mona, but that's about it. Alright, we made it to the end. It was very long, but I hope it was worth your time. And uh, next, uh, Emily will release, so stay tuned for that. And of course, we are very close to Natlan. I will definitely cover all of that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.